Here is the 2024 Toyota Sienna. We have the limited trim in the windshield pearl and the XLE in the pre-dawn gray metallic. Which one's going to be better? Some pros and cons, comparable rivals, and the problem that I have with the Sienna. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. Starting with the limited trim, you're gonna have the gloss black elements, which is gonna be on the top part of the grill. That's on both, but the satin aluminum will brush into the premium by LED headlights. And on the lower trim, you get the gloss black elements with the satin gray inlays. Whereas on the XLE, you have LED headlights and daytime runnings, but now you're receiving the chrome treatment instead of the matte black that would be on the LE. The lower trim is going to get the matte black in case with the chrome surrounding it, front parking sensors for both models and over six inches of clearance. Same power option is going to be found on all trims. A 2.5 liter inline four cylinder with 245 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque paired to an eCVT transmission. Both will achieve 36 MPGs for the city and 36 MPGs for the highway, which is the best in class. The LE and the XLE will get standard standard 17 inch alloy wheels, bump it up to the XSE and you'll get 20 inch wheels with a sport tuned suspension. The Limited is gonna get 18 inch bright chrome wheels. Chrome on the door handle start on the XLE around the window for the top trim, leaving the back part for a little shelf for the sliding door so it makes it look more like an SUV. The lower skirt is gonna be the same color as the body, whereas when you go into the Limited, you'll get the gloss black elements. Towing, all trims, 3,500 pounds. Whereas the Odyssey will get up to 4,500 pounds, the Pacifica over 3,600 pounds, the rear is going to get the X-style LED taillights, the lower is gonna get the matte black, gonna be a little bit more subtle for the XLE. And the Sienna badging for the Limited gets the chrome treatment, whereas you'll get the matte black for the XLE, which I feel that actually looks more sporty than the chrome. When you get into the Limited and Platinum tier, you can option a digital rear view mirror, and you can also option a dash cam, which we have on the XLE. So it has a camera on the front and on the back. Therefore, you don't have to purchase it aftermarket. It's already installed through the dealer. Power liftgate starts on the XLE, both cargo will go to 33.5. This is with them stowed down. You have a storage tier on the side. This is the limited trim. On the XLE, this is with it not stowed down, so you'll see that 33.5 cubic feet of storage. And this is with the bench, you'll have 75.4 cubic feet of storage. And with everything folded forward, you can max cargo up to 101 cubic feet, both of which will have a low entrance for the opening, and then it'll kind of taper inward. And the XLE, you got eight speakers, so they'll have two in the tailgate, whereas we got the 12 speakers in the limited JBL sound system. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver. Four-way power seat adjustment for the passenger. Soft tech seats, heated front seats. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver. Four-way power seat adjustment for the passenger. Heated, ventilated front seats. Memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. It's gonna be the same in both trims. They are different in the interior, starting with eight speakers for the XLE. This is a nine inch infotainment screen. Optional digital rear view mirror starts on the limited. And we have a dash cam that is installed by Toyota. No navigation. You'll have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse. You get a reverse camera, but no trajectory that will expand. Whereas on the limited, the lines will expand out. Quad climate control starts on the XLE. Wireless charging pad is an option for all trims. And I like that we have this layer here for storage with a USB port right here. Both key fobs will be identical. And you got a little area here that you can store the keys. Gloss black elements are going to surround the gear lever. Open up for more cup holders on the top tier. Driving mode select. Gauge cluster for the driver that can go through an array of information. Standard is a 4.2. And for the driver modes, we have sport, 
and Eco. 10 inch heads up display only on the Platinum. The LE gets optional digital rear view mirror with a moon roof. And we have a large storage bin right here with two more USB ports. You have your armrest right next to it and you have two right in the back. So in theory, you have a total of five up in the front with another storage tray for the driver's side. And the door panel is going to be a little bit more soft right here. Everyday materials up top, one touch up and down for the windows and two tiers of storage. For the second row headroom, and the leg room. These are the captain seats, which means you can recline it and check out how it looks. Storage behind both of the front seats. Cup holders there in the center. You'll have the pass through and the fourth climate control standard. Sun shades are going to be on all trims and it's gonna be a little bit more sport derived with one cup holder and of course, you have the kick to open or power, and here is the bench layout, which will have the same configuration all around, except it's a bench seat where it sits up a little bit higher, and you'll have that seat in the center where you sit pretty much the same way. But with the leg space, you're not really going to be sharing much, even butt, shoulder, and leg space because this is a Sienna. Begin to the back, hold it up, push it forward. Look how much room you got to enter for three more to sit. Two more USB ports, cup holders. Third row sunshade is an option on the XSE. Headroom, not going to be an issue. Legroom is okay, but you're gonna be against the back of the second row seats. Sitting into the center here is where you'll optimize the most with those captain seats, because you could just stretch out and it's gonna be the same headroom for both. And both of the third row can recline back relatively far. But behind the driver, there is no USB ports. And because this is the limited trim, we get the third row sunshades. 245 horsepower combined. Turn radius is about lane, two and a half lanes. Now you're not going to be flooring this car. It's not something that you're putting on the track. So comparing the two trims, both will have the same more or less ride because you're going from a 17 inch to an 18 inch, both with the same tuned suspension, unless you go to the XSE, which is a sport tuned suspension in which you'll get 20 inch wheels. So it'll be a little bit more harsh for the day in and day out. And when you're thinking practical in minivan, you want sweet spot in the XLE kind of unlocks all of that because you can option the most in this trim. You can also get an eight passenger layout, which we have, or a captain seat layout, which gives you the best of both worlds. And you're still getting somewhat of a styling that is more luxury derived, but you can always do a Chrome delete if you don't like the exterior styling. Both will receive over six inches of clearance. Now it will feel somewhat like an SUV, but it still has the presence of a minivan, predominantly because of the way the dash is and the hood configures lower. If it picked up or raised just a touch more, it would look a little bit more sporty, which is gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, this trim is by far the best and price point is also really good because when you're considering the Chrysler Pacifica, that vehicle extends heavy in the price point, especially when you start going pinnacle trim. I understand you can get pillow cushions in the rear and it kind of looks like a Maybach, but it's a minivan. We're looking for a practical vehicle, not too expensive, great MPGs, and still getting towing capabilities, which will take me to a con because this is not the best in class. You'll have to go to Honda and the Pacifica to get more towing capabilities. You can option all wheel drive, which is a nice touch if you live up north. I don't think I would take the box living down south. And because this is the XLE, another pro, you can get the larger infotainment screen instead of this nine inch, but you cannot option the seven inch digital gauge cluster where you get that when you start going up the tier. I like that we get the soft tech seats instead of the cloth that comes standard in the LE. And the best part about it is all trims can get the optional dash cam for the front and the rear. So you don't have to do anything. It's already configured. You don't receive the latest safety technology because this is Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. And if you want the manual sun shades for the third row, you have to option up to an XSE trim in which you're getting a little bit more sporty. That leads me to the big problem. 
which when you are optioning a Chrysler Pacifica, you have multiple engine options. It's the only trim that does that when you're thinking of minivans, in which both of them received a refresh back in 2021. We lost the V6 when we go into the Sienna, but you still capture that when you go into the Honda. I'm not saying I like something that's more gas or not fuel efficient. I'm saying that I like to have some options if I want it to be a little bit more sport derived because we are trying to make it look like an SUV. The suspension is comfortable and it feels somewhat like a limousine, but when you go up the tier onto the Pacifica, it's going to feel a lot more limo-like and we have 17 inch wheels with this. Now on the limited trim, it's still quiet, still composed, 18 inch to a 17 inch is not a huge deal breaker there. The seats are gonna be more comfortable and they're ventilated, which when you're in the state of Florida, it's something that you kinda like, cause it does get hot, even though it's cool today. 18 cup and bottle holders found throughout the cabin, so that takes the box. And another pro, whether you option the Limited or XLE, it's the best with storage nooks. I mean, this pass-through, it's the biggest in class. A flat floor, so for leg space, it's good for any row, even in the front, even though it's somewhat of a driver-focused setup, it still has enough room for the front occupants. And usually when you get these driver focused setups, it just bulges out too much in which it doesn't do that here. Now the disadvantage is in the footwell area, it will still have a little bit of a lip on both the left or right side, depending on the side that you sit. But that's because of the design of it where they're just trying to maximize space. And as for the competition, I mean, Toyota is bringing the heat with the MPGs, the everyday use, and all hybrid trims. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Gettle Stadium Toyota for giving us this comparison between the 2024 Toyota Sienna Limited and XLE trim for our car review.